Today I've got some huge stories for you, starting with a new CPU competitor destroying Intel. Intel's battle mage gets spotted, RDNA 4 is added, AMD's monster APU leaks, and RX 9000 could be AMD's Ryzen moment for GPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, Qualcomm Snapdragon X. If you've been following this channel, you know that this is Qualcomm's upcoming processor that is ARM-based, but is for Windows. And let's just say Intel is in some serious trouble. This story originally leaked from internal documents from Dell, and in these documents, they're comparing their older XPS 13 systems to the upcoming Snapdragon-based version. And once again, like I said, not looking good for Intel. As you can see right here, first up we have this. And when we look at video playback time, you're gonna notice there's a pretty big change. Intel's system right here is 15.45 hours while the new Qualcomm is 29 hours. So we're talking nearly double the playback time, double the battery life. Over here, we have 11.02 to 21.9 or 21.5. Then we have 9.95 to nearly 17. Once again, massive jumps here, and these are respectively in order 91%, 98%, and 68% improvement in battery life, which of course is due to efficiency. ARM is obviously pretty well known for being very efficient when compared to x86 chips, and obviously this is a pretty big deal because we're talking about notebooks here. But wait, because there's more. When we move on down here, we can actually see pricing from uh, Dell for their upcoming computers, and we have some comparisons. You can actually see right here that with the new chips, we're looking at $145 versus 293 to 276, which means that these new Qualcomm chips aren't just significantly better when it comes to power draw and things like that, way more efficient, they're also significantly cheaper, meaning Qualcomm Snapdragon X could seriously be a game-changing chip and really put the fire under both Intel, because obviously these are really just comparing it to Intel, but obviously also AMD, proving once again that competition is incredibly important in, well, basically every industry, but obviously also the computing industry as well. But first, I've got the most comprehensive vehicle warfare game out there, and it's free on PC and consoles. I'm of course talking about this video's sponsor, War Thunder, the game that lets you take command of over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships. Whether you want biplanes from the 1920s or modern tanks, War Thunder has something for everyone. And thanks to the unmatched attention to detail put on each vehicle, along with real realistic graphics and authentic sound effects, War Thunder puts you right in the helm of the world's most powerful war machines. So don't wait any longer and join 70 million players in the most epic PvP battles today. Plus, when you visit my link in the description, new and returning players that haven't played in 6 months will receive multiple premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, and 7 days of premium account. It's only available for a limited time, so make sure to click that link in the description below. And next up for today, if you saw my recent video, you know that I had to sort of make a correction here that we had seen something from a well-known leaker. They said, Battle Mage, there's no shadow of Battle Mage at all. There will be no discrete GPU 3, DG3 next year, which is their discrete graphics for Battle Mage. But later we found out, and this was this last video, that what they meant was mobile discrete GPUs. And we actually just got something from Intel's uh, LLVM. This is basically a part of their one API. So this is something that Intel themselves shared. And as you can see, it has their G21 Battle Mage GPU. So far from what we've seen, Intel's gonna be releasing a G21 GPU and I believe it's G10. Either way, this right here shows that G21 is in fact coming, but not just that, it already being in the one API while the other one isn't seems to suggest that they're actually going to be releasing their higher end G21 first. Maybe Intel is just trying to get it out there as quickly as they can so they can have something that's more powerful than what they have now. I'm not really sure, but it's definitely exciting to see what Intel may be doing for next gen. 
And speaking of next gen, AMD's RDNA 4 GPU also just saw a patch. This one is for the Mesa Linux driver, which actually just merged. So this was actually completely added and embedded into it with this new update. And you can see right here, it says AMD's initial support for its next-gen RDNA 4 GPUs and its VCN5 hardware has finally been merged into the Radeon SI OpenGL driver in Linux. Basically, AMD is gearing up for release of their next-gen RDNA 4 GPUs. Not only that, but as you can see right here, based on this readiness, we're actually expecting optimal support for their next-gen GPUs when they're launched. And this obviously shows that AMD is committed to Linux moving forward, and obviously anyone who's on Linux, that's definitely going to be great news for next-gen. And while sticking once again to the topic of next gen, this time moving over to their APUs, a massive leak just happened that gives us some new insight into AMD's upcoming Strix Halo APUs. Remember that these are AMD's upcoming monster APUs with upwards of 40 CUs, which means that these APUs are gonna come with integrated graphics that are faster than even mid-range GPUs, definitely making these some wild releases. Well, as you can see right here, it looks like a shipping manifest just leaked, and while it doesn't specifically state Strixpoint, it does mention the FP11 socket, which is supposed to be the socket that only Strixpoint is on. Not only that, but I believe in another part of the manifest, it specifically says FP11 Strixpoint. Either way, that is clearly what this is referring to, and at least according to this, we are looking at a TDP of 120 watts. Obviously, while that may sound like a lot, given these, at least for now, are obviously going to be a notebook don't forget that this is both the CPU and that monster GPU. Not only that, but it shows configurations with between 32 and 64 gigabytes of memory. Now, when it comes to memory, there's actually something really interesting from video cards. They mentioned that the memory is apparently going to be soldered down to the motherboard, which obviously that's sort of bad because it means you don't have dim slots, which means you can't upgrade it later or anything like that. But it's also sort of good because it would mean that you would get this massive APU that's going to be replacing both the CPU and the GPU. Then obviously you don't have to deal with these dim slots here. So this could lead to some really thin notebook designs, yet it would actually be a powerful gaming rig. Basically, AMD's next-gen APUs are looking more and more exciting by the day. And lastly for today, we have a new update on AMD's not next-gen GPUs, but the ones right after. And let's just say that this could be one massive upgrade, something that we've been waiting for a really long time for. Either way, this story originally comes from the hardware leaker WJM, and as you can see, as they state, they really haven't been all that active lately, but they made some really big predictions, including the RX 6000 XT refresh. So clearly, this is a leaker that knows what they're talking about, and they recently discussed some pretty wild stuff. As you can see right here, first up, they discuss RDNA 3, and they state that it actually didn't meet its performance expectations, resulting in the big core frequency power curve going out of control. This includes, but is not limited to, conducting one-chip interconnect verification for the MIX series and sharing R&D costs. Basically, RDNA 3 was not what AMD had hoped for. Obviously, that's not too much of a surprise for anyone who watches this channel. Still, RDNA 4, we know that, at least according to leaks, there is not going to be high-end RDNA 4 GPUs. That is a big bummer, but it actually looks even worse. According to this, RDNA 4 is merely a bug fix for RDNA 3, so its performance is still as expected at best comparable to the 7900 XT. Now, obviously that means it isn't going to be winning any kind of awards for fastest GPU or anything like that, but of course, if the price is right, it could still be worth it. He also notes that there is going to be a improvement in ray tracing, and of course, we have talked about that here as well, but Things get really interesting when we discuss RDNA 5. As you can see right here, it says RDNA 5 will be a clean sheet design similar to the Zen series. Now, if you know anything about CPUs over the last few years, you know that AMD's Zen 1 series launched in 2017 was the company's big turnaround. This was their first gen Ryzen, meaning if this is right, RDNA 5 is set to be a complete ground up change for their 
we're just going to call them RX 9000 GPUs for now, but obviously I have no clue what they'll end up being called, but still RX 9000, whatever it ends up being, that would mean that those GPUs are a complete redesign and could actually do what Zen did for AMD's CPUs. Like I said, if you know anything about that, that was a massive turning point for the company. Basically, if this is right, if AMD is able to do something huge like with their Zen series, but with RDNA 5, they could completely turn around the GPU industry. Fingers crossed this does end up happening, but of course, time, as always, will tell. And a shout out to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check them out for free on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation. And don't forget to visit the link in the description to get your free bonus pack. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's RDNA 5 GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please make sure to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.